Hey everybody, so glad to have you here. It's been a while since we've done a deep dive here on this channel and I'm excited to get back into it with you all. Now, it is difficult because I am a licensed professional, so this, this is what I do for clients, so I'm, I'm regulated by the government. So I have to be careful what I say. This is not financial advice for you and I'm putting myself at risk when I do these as we are a rather litigious society. So if you appreciate these stock analysis videos, I hope you'll take the time to show your support in the comments and by hitting the like button. Thank you. Now this is just going to be an overview analysis, but it's, it's going to be packed with all the most important factors that you should consider before making an investment decision about meta platforms, ticker FB. If these overview analysis videos do well and you're interested in a more behind the scenes, uh, nuanced data entry, over the shoulder perspective, uh, complete with highlighted and annotated notes from the earnings calls and annual and quarterly reports, again, uh, please let me know in the comments and I will find a way to make it happen. Uh, it's probably gonna require some more in your face disclosures, but I bet we can figure it out. So let me know. Let's talk about Facebook or meta. Since the earnings release last week, the stock is now down about 40% from its high. Uh, highs where countless analysts were still screaming buy. Buy, 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 buy. To where so now, no there's a, a bit more hesitation, including several significant downward price target revisions. What changed? Uh, two big things, really, at least in regards to new developments that, that an investor could have taken away from their call. First of all, they spent a whole bunch on their metaverse vision, a bit more than they said they would, like 25% or $2.5 billion more. And they've made it clear that they don't plan to let up at all in 2022, which we'll talk more about in a bit. But is that really a surprise? They said that was the direction they were heading. They said they were going to spend like $10 billion on it in 2021. They ended up spending almost 13. I mean, they changed their name to Meta, an homage to the direction that the company's heading into the metaverse. Again, we'll explore the, the numbers a bit more in a bit. And then number two, they saw their first decline in user metrics since ever. I'm just talking about one user metric here. And that's really been a big part of how the company has been valued over the years. You know, it's the same with a lot of these tech companies. If you build it, they will come. If you build it, you will come. The Netflix valuation was that way as well for a long time. Uh, they'll figure out how to monetize it now that they've proven that they have the users. So let's dive into that. How bad was it? What exactly does this look like? Well, let's start with their headline metric of family daily active people. That is a registered and logged in user of Facebook, Messenger, WhatsApp, and or Instagram. That number in Q4 2021 hit 2.82 billion people, the highest it's ever been, although the growth is obviously slowing down. But think about that for a moment, 2.82 billion people daily, at least according to their calculations, are accessing at least one of Meta's core products. Monthly, it's 3.59 billion. That number may seem like a lot to you, it should. You might be thinking, ah, the world's population is just under 8 billion, so they're about halfway, yeah, I guess that's pretty good. But no, you can't look at it that way. It's only a little more than half of the world's population that even has access to the internet. In 2022, there are roughly 4.66 billion active internet users and only about 4.2 billion active social media users. And Facebook is banned in China, which means at least for now, there's nothing they can really do about that. So you can't really count them as far as the market potential here. Given that about 50% of the Chinese population has access to the internet, that means that roughly 840 million of those active internet users are not fair game. So 4.66 billion minus 840 million leaves 3.82 billion people. In other words, that's the size of the market that is available to them right now. And they have, according to their numbers, 3.59 billion monthly active people, or a more than 94% penetration of their potential global market. That's insane. I don't think anybody would have ever guessed that possible back when Facebook IPO'd a decade ago. And Facebook, the, the social media platform alone, boasts 2.9 billion monthly active users, as in without accounting for their other platforms. Now, that first ever decline I spoke of came in Facebook's, the isolated platform, daily active user count. 
But remember, their daily active people, which factors for their four primary platforms, still climbed over this period. And despite very real concerns about their users losing interest in being on their platforms, they've still managed to maintain their same daily active to monthly active people and user ratios that they've been experiencing for a long time now. So this is one of the headwinds that pessimistic analysts will point to as a justification for the stock's recent crash their user decline. When in reality, we're dealing with a finite market size here, and they've captured way more of that market than anyone ever would have thought possible. So for me, I'm not surprised by these figures. In fact, I'm still impressed at what they've been able to accomplish as a company in that regard. I suspect the massive sell-off has more to do with the general nervousness of the market. There are a lot of macroeconomic concerns and headwinds and just things that could cause a crash. Valuations are and have been for a long time high. So I think this is more just the, the nervous, trigger-happy fund managers who are just looking for any glimpse of negativity, ready to jump to the safety of the sidelines, and then consequently creating these self-fulfilling massive volatility swings in pockets of the market. I think that's what's really happening here with, with Meta. Now, as to whether or not the rest of the market follows at some point in the near future, I couldn't say. I could see it either way. I think that really depends on the powers that be and how quick they might be to make their decisions to kick the can down the road. But I digress into the macroeconomics of it. Absolutely important for any investor and will have an impact on, on your investments, but not what we're talking about here. So what other headwinds is Meta facing? If we did see a larger scale financial crisis, their revenue would suffer. When businesses are suffering, their ad spend is one of the earlier things to go. After the GFC in 2008, it took a while for the broad market's ad spend to recover back to pre-recession levels. And as you probably know, that is the vast majority of Meta's current revenue, which we'll break down in more detail in a bit. Another headwind is their increased competition, n not just for users, but also for advertisers' dollars. Pinterest and Snapchat are, are getting better and better themselves at providing marketers with what they want. You see that when you study their earnings. And as you know, they're not the only competition. Twitter, TikTok, Alphabet's YouTube, Microsoft's LinkedIn, all of these are providing competition to Meta's platforms, both in users' time and the value they're able to provide to advertisers. And then you have another giant, Apple, potentially crowding the advertising party even further. Another massive headwind, perhaps related to that Apple advertising thing, has been the iOS changes restricting Facebook's ability to gather as much data on its users. Here, let's listen to a clip of what the CFO said on the earnings call. And you know, we believe the impact of iOS overall as a headwind on our business uh, in 2022 is on the order of $10 billion. So it's a pretty significant uh, headwind for our business. Yeah, I concur pretty significant. Ten billion dollars. We'll get a complete picture of their numbers in a bit, but yeah, that's a lot. Now, they've overcome things like this in the past, and for the most part, this should be affecting not only Meta's platforms, but its peers as well. So from a comparative value standpoint of what Facebook, for example, is able to offer a business looking to spend some ad money, they all should be dealing with the same headwind here, except maybe Apple in the near future. And now there's talk of Alphabet's Android following suit. Yeah, yeah, that, that makes sense. Then there are the regulatory and antitrust concerns that are always there for all these tech giants. Uh, most recently, we could point to Meta's threat to withdraw Facebook and Instagram from Europe due to their restrictions on sharing data. That'd be so interesting, don't you think? I mean, I'm sure they're just posturing I'm sure it's it's just a threat, but I, I love the French finance minister Bruno Le Maire's response, where he said, I assure you we can live very well without Facebook. Now, I, I tend to agree. I, I think social media is, for the most part, a negative tearing away at our social fabric. And yes, I see the irony of saying that here on a social media platform, but that's not important for this investing conversation here, at least. It would be super interesting if Meta actually followed through. I wonder what the European people would do and ultimately the European you know, authorities. I mean, we're addicted to our social media, man. It's bad, but oh boy, addictions make for some sticky business models. But people don't like having their addictions taken from them, let alone cold turkey. I don't know. 
I don't think Meta will follow through, but I'd be super interested to see how that would all play out if they did. And their final major headwind from a shareholder perspective goes back to that first point I brought up about their earnings call. It's their high R&D costs. We already talked about the specifics there where they ended up spending more than $12 billion last year on their metaverse, their augmented and virtual reality vision. And luckily for investors, they've split out the numbers for this AR VR arm of their business. It's called Reality Labs. So we can see that the Reality Labs revenue is climbing, but also that they're investing pretty heavily into it. And as their CFO pointed out on their earnings call, they have no plans to let up. Uh, though we do expect Reality Labs operating loss to increase meaningfully in 22, and that's incorporated into our outlook. But here's the great thing about a massive company generating ridiculous amounts of free cash flow. They can afford to invest, or to gamble, if you want to call it that. It reminds me of Google a decade ago, which was doing the exact same thing as it sought to diversify its sources of revenue. Today, Google, the, the search engine, is still their cash cow, but they're still growing revenue sources in a lot of different areas, and they continue to seek opportunities to expand. Amazon does the same thing. Years ago, Jeff Bezos admitted that his penchant for experimentation has led to Amazon losing a lot. He said, I've made billions of dollars of failures at Amazon.com, literally. So although you could point to the Fire Phone as one example and say, ha, that was a huge waste of money, many of his gambles, like the, the Kindle and the Echo, for example, have paid off. So yeah, this is a massive bet, and there's no guarantee that it will pan out in the way that they hope it will. But they are one of the few companies that is uniquely in a position that they can make this bet without needing venture capital funds or incurring massive amounts of debt. Actually, this is one of Meta's advantages. They pretty much have no debt. Their debt to equity ratio is technically 0.12. They're net cash positive despite these major investments that they're making. They have $50 billion in the bank in cash and short-term investments on their balance sheet, with more than $14 billion in accounts receivable. In total, they have almost $67 billion in current assets, compared to $21 billion in current liabilities and $41 billion in total liabilities. Those current assets are enough to buy more than 10% of the company. And they have been doing a lot of buybacks recently, so there's yet another potential positive for shareholders. So yeah, they're spending a high dollar amount on their metaverse vision, but they appear to be doing it in a, in a pretty responsible way. And as a percentage of their revenue, it's actually not any different than what they've been doing in the recent past. They're just making a lot of money. So when they spend 20% on R&D, yeah, it feels like a lot because it is a lot but not really when thought of as a percentage of what they're bringing in. As for their sources of revenue, they continue to improve what they're able to offer advertisers. That's obviously their main revenue source, advertising to their billions of users. And so Q4 of last year actually saw their highest average revenue per user ever. Across the board, in every region, they were able to increase this important metric which is why their overall revenue in each of the global regions has continued to climb, despite the daily active user declines in, in some regions. And it's not like their focus on AR and VR has eclipsed what they're doing here. They haven't stopped trying to increase their revenue wherever they can. For example, in addition to Facebook and Instagram, they own the two most popular messaging apps, and they're just starting to monetize WhatsApp. And its growth alone over the years is not too far behind Facebook. You know what? Even if users start to abandon, as I have, and gravitate towards other platforms, Facebook has something they don't. Facebook is the social media platform for the older generations. This older demographic is much slower to change, especially when it comes to the adoption of technology. So they're stubbornly loyal in that regard but they also have more money than other generations. So from an advertiser's perspective, those who are spending their money advertising to the users of Facebook will naturally be able to spend more than they would for users on other platforms. So even if the playing field starts to level out as more and more platforms not owned by Meta start to catch up, Facebook still has control of and will likely maintain control of this golden goose that is the attention of the baby boomer demographic. Right, let's get into a basic 
discounted cash flow model to estimate what Facebook might be worth to me today. Again, these are just my thoughts, my rantings. This is not a recommendation or endorsement of this stock. In fact, I do not hold Facebook stock right now, and I don't have any plans to initiate a position over the next few days or anything like that for reasons that I'll explain at the end of this video. I just hope this helps you learn to and feel more confident with your own stock analyses. All right, now, before I jump behind my computer to, to show you my screen and take you through my thought process here, let's talk about a fair multiple for Meta. Specifically, what's a PE ratio that this company could reasonably justify? Well, five years ago, its PE ratio was flirting with 40, but more recently, let's say from 2018 through today, it's only broken above 35 once. It's low over the last five years, other than right now, was 17.32, and that was at the end of 2018 when everything was coming down. Its PE ratio today is around 16. Its average over the last four or so years is a little north of 25. Now with that, that's all gonna come back up in a second. I'll jump behind the screen and show you what I'm thinking. Okay, so this is a discounted future earnings analysis that I put together for Facebook. And I'd love to spend more time with uh, with you going through some of the specifics here, why I use what I use, but I wanna focus this video on, on specifically on, on Facebook. So if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. Um, if you'd like to see more videos or about any, any of these details, definitely let me know. So I, I'm going to use uh, the trailing 12 months earnings per share as uh, my multiple that I'm the variable that I'm following throughout this throughout this timeline. Uh, and the reason I want to use something that's per share uh, is because of the amount of buybacks that Facebook has done. That obviously has a significant impact on the per share metrics because as they reduce the number of shares, every individual share then has greater amount of earnings that can be attributed to that to that share. Uh, so that's, I, I need, I wanted to capture that here. Um, so that's why I'm using earnings per share. That's a common thing to use, but I wouldn't have to, but I, I like it a lot with, with Facebook as far as the insights it gives me into the company, especially since they've been, um, they've been focusing on earnings for a long time. So that's, that's helpful. Uh, as far as the base case goes, I, I wanted to look at what their earnings per share growth rate has been in the past to get an idea um, to project out into the future. I'm just looking at the seven year time timeline here uh, with the idea of what could I sell it for in seven years that allows some time for the market to crash and recover, uh, that allows some time for a lot of different things to happen. So that's why I like to look out uh, about that far. Sometimes it's a little different. That's usually what I'm, what I'm using for my analyses. Uh, so I looked at the earnings per share growth since they went public. I left out the, the growth from 2012 to 2013 just because that's obviously an outlier and that's that's not going to happen again as far as the percentage goes. Um, their average growth over the last five years has been about 35%. Uh, so it's covering the, these years here. And then over the last eight years, and the only reason I went back eight years again is because I wanted to leave off that year, um, has been about 55%. And you can see, you know, you had that big, big surge. But even when you look at, you know, this 55% year, I mean, they've had a 55% year just in 2020. So they're not that far away from that. That's, it's not crazy. Um, so the last five years, good growth, 35%. Um, as far as the base case goes, uh, I'm picturing, you know, so as far as that, how that fits into their narrative, I, I'm, I'm in my mind thinking, what if Meta doesn't really pan out? They don't ever overextend themselves, so they don't ever spend more than, than what they can, uh, more than they're bringing in, um, while still being able to focus on, you know, on, on their ad revenue and what they're generating from there. So they continue to optimize that, you know, they, they, uh, figure out how to monetize maybe Messenger a little bit, but definitely WhatsApp, um, and they continue to optimize all of that. With that, they would still have growth over the next over the next five years. Um, something in between twenty and twenty five percent, I think, would be conservative uh, if they continued on that on that path. Because yeah, I'm not my base case is, is not assuming maybe even there's small amounts of, of there's some decline over the next seven years as far as their users. But like I said, I, I think their base is sticky enough and wealthy enough that they're still going to be able to to grow. So as far as the growth rate goes, if I think between 20 and 25%, um, I'll just be conservative and go with 22% there. Um, and I, this is just something, it'll make it less interesting to watch, but I don't put in the earnings per share until the end. The earnings per share last year were th was 13.77. I will put that in at the end, but what I found over the, the 
a decade of plus of, of doing these analyses is that if I have that in there, as I'm filling out the numbers, I'm much more likely to adjust the numbers because it's so fickle. I mean, small changes make big can make a big difference here. I'm much more likely to adjust the numbers because of a, a presupposition that I had about what I, I think it should be worth. And so I, I want to avoid that. So I'll add that in later over here. Um, but for now, I'm just going to input, I'm going to think through logically what uh, where I think these these variables should be just to give me an idea of what Facebook would be worth to me. Uh, so the terminal multiple comes back to the conversation we were just having about the PE ratio. That is just, you know, what is it worth at the end of the time period that I'm holding it? So in seven years, what could I sell it for? Uh, and so if I think their, their earnings are growing at this rate, then I can apply that PE multiple at that point. So given the information I, I shared with you there, I, I feel t like 20 is a is a fair estimate for that point in the future. Like I said, their average right now has been 25 conservatively. Um, so assuming that they're starting to trail off even more at that point, uh, so the, a reasonable multiple for them might be 20. Uh, so I'll put that there. Uh, as far as their bull case scenario, um, so for growth right there, again, just for reference, you, know, you have your 35% here over the last five years. I think their bull case scenario is that, that you know what, we, we haven't given uh, the team over their credit a lot of times for ideas that they've had in the past. Um, you know, I, I know, I remember when Facebook went public, a lot of people didn't think, didn't know how they were going to be able to monetize. They didn't think they were, they were going to be able to successfully introduce ads into this free service that they had. They did. They did in spades. And so obviously they, they've proven that they can they can do that. And they, they've done that several times along the way where they've had surges in growth. And so if Meta plays out the way that they think it's going to, uh, I don't think uh, continuing this growth growth rate is unreasonable. In fact, I think it's probably pretty conservative um, at that point. Um, you know, and there's also a variable for other things over the next seven years that they're they're going to be able to to use all of their free cash flow to innovate. They have a lot of smart people there, a lot of, a lot of top talent. Um, so if they're able to leverage that, uh, then then I, I think they'll they'll have even more opportunities for growth. So I could put 35% here. I, I think again, um, I'll go conservative and conservative for the bull case and say that it, it goes up by by 32%. And then, if, if that's the case, if it's if it's still showing that growth, you know, they're they're uh, in seven years, kind of where they are today. You know, they've started a few new, uh, they have a few new growth, high growth potential projects that they that they have going for them, um, or or they, you know, those are a few years in. Then I think it'd, it'd be reasonable that they carry a, a comparable multiple to what they what's been the average for them recently, which is uh, twenty five. So that's the the multiple that I'm I'm gonna use there. As for the bear scenario, uh, yeah, I guess that would be meta not playing out, uh, them spending a lot of money on that. I, I don't foresee them overextending. I don't foresee them taking on a lot of, a lot of debt or anything like that to be able to, to see this vision through. Uh, that would be uncharacteristically irresponsible. Uh, that would be a, you know, a, a sign probably for me to, to exit a position if I, if I held a position. You know, that would be a deal breaker. Uh, I, I don't think that they would, that they would do that. What I could see as a possibility on the bear side is that they, that they pour money into this and it doesn't pan out as, as they expected. Um, it just kind of flops and they don't get anything else going. They do still have their, their ad revenue. And I, I think even if they have a lot of regulatory issues and they have a lot of competition come in and they start dropping the ball on some of the value they're offering to marketers, even with that, I think over the next seven years, uh, it's, it, it's going to be hard for them to not still have some growth. Uh, so, I, I mean, I, I'll put it, Somewhere between 10 and 15 percent. I think I think 10 is probably low. But I'll use 12 percent here. And then also for the terminal multiple there. I mean, looking at some some old tech companies that are kind of on their way out. Uh, I, I think 12 is is probably a realistic downside uh, option there as well. Um, and so we can plug in the this is the you know the fun part. Plug in the earnings per share and see how how it all. Uh, populates uh, and that that gives us a base case bull case and bear case um, likely so so the bear case is under where its current price is and as I'm as I'm doing recording this video it's having a good day a good bounce back but when I when I think through 
the likelihood of each of these scenarios, I think the bull and bears are rather on the extremes. So I minimize the likelihood in my calculation of, of those scenarios, increase the likelihood of the, of the base case scenario. I think that's, I, I feel pretty good about that still being somewhat conservative, a lot of conservative assumptions built in there. So that's why I put the probability here at, at 70%. Factoring all of that out, that leaves me with a, a final total of $611. So higher than my base case scenario, um, you know, present value of my base case scenario. But because I think the bull case scenario of things do click for them and do work, because that has so much potential upside, that is pulling up my, my total figure, what I'd be willing to, to pay for the stock. So I have the current price plugged in here, a couple of other assumptions that, that you can check out and ask me about if you're curious about about those. But again, like I said, I don't want to spend too much time on this. So that's that's the number just with uh, with my calculations, my research, where I think it, it fits in. I don't have a position today. And the reason for that, really, I mean, I do think it's it's going to be positioned for, there's going to be, it's going to be a good opportunity. But because there are so many more macro headwinds, there, there's so many things that could happen that will happen at some point. I don't know when, whether it's this year, whether it's a year from now, um, whether it's five years from now, that will cause a much deeper crash than we've experienced at least than we've experienced so far this year. And that will push this and, and obviously other stocks down further. So really what I would want here before I enter a position would be everything to be aligned. So right now the fundamentals are, are aligned for me. It's, it's in, in a good position, but I want the technicals to be aligned. I'd want there to be uh, somewhat of a trend. I'd want there to be some momentum. Uh, so I'll be watching for that. But right now the technicals are, are not are not good. Uh, you don't gap down 26%. You don't usually immediately bounce back. Uh, usually there's a lot of selling pressure there. Uh, and so that you continue to see that for a while. There are no guarantees with technical analysis, but I mean, I pulled up a, a summary just to give you an idea. When you're looking out, if you're planning on holding this for a long time, you look out even a week. Uh, I mean, it's, it just gives you some, some summary statistics on uh, the technical side of things. And again, we could go into more detail on that. We could put together a whole video just looking at the technicals of Facebook. And, and that is something that, you know, I'll be doing as far as watching for an opportunity that might make sense to, to enter. But anyway, I, I sincerely do hope you found this video helpful. This is research that I do anyway. Um, like I said, it's, it's kind of at a risk to me because of the uh, regulations that I'm under. But if you found it helpful, please take the time to, to like and comment and subscribe. And I look forward to getting to know you better and helping you however I can. You'll probably want to check out this video next and I hope I see you over there. I wish you all the best. Take care.